Deskew Technologies has just released a small update to Gig Performer 5 that is completely free for current Gig Performer 5 license holders. This update includes some new actions which will allow you to automate your live performances so you can focus just on playing, while Gig Performer handles the rest from patch switching to sending external program change messages to your various hardware devices to turning pages to really whatever you can dream of. Gig Performer actions allow you to do this. And in addition, we've also got some nice little workflow improvements that I'm gonna show you today. We're gonna start with going through the actions. And these actions, most of them, except for one, which I'll show you, are available both within the set list view as a song part action and from a marker in the streaming audio file player. If you wanna check out more about markers, watch Marty Wade's awesome video where he goes into detail about how to use markers. For now, let's start with how I've got this gig file set up. I like to keep my streaming audio file player for the most part in the global rack space. And this allows me to make use of those tracks from anywhere within my gig file, which I think is advantageous. Although there are certainly use cases where you may want this in a local rack space. But in order to use these new awesome actions, I need to give my streaming audio file player a name. If I right mouse click, I can scroll down here to OSC GP script handle and choose set handle. And I can give this a name. Now, I just named it SAFP Master because that's really easy for me to remember. You can name it anything that you'd like. Now, the first action I want to show you is that now within Gig Performer, you can use song part actions or markers to select a new track and to control whether it plays, pauses, or stops. So in this tune, Tritone, you'll like it. I'm going to have the intro start and select which tracks I would like to use. So when I go into actions here, I'm gonna insert a new action and I'm gonna choose select track. This is gonna let me pick whichever track I wanna use. So if I paste in here my uh, name and check global, all of my tracks will become available. And I know for this particular tune, I want jazz drums. Now, what do I want jazz drums to do? Well, now I can set that from here as well going to the drop down and choosing SAFP track operations. And I can say global play. And I'm just checking this global box because my streaming audio file player is in the global rack space. Now, when I hit save, those actions will be there and we can actually test and see if this works. So I'll bring up the streaming audio file player and I'm gonna select Funky Groove since that is not the tune that we're going to use. And when I click Tritone, you'll like it, it is going to switch my tracks to jazz drums and start playing. That's really nice. So as soon as I start this song, I will know my track is ready to go. But there are a couple more things you can do now with actions and markers that I want to show you. So in this case, I know when I get to my chorus, I have a new sound. I've got my organ sound. But I want to make sure that the chorus always has a ride symbol. So when I go to the chorus here and I choose actions, I'm going to use the go to marker action. And this one is only available within the song part actions. So when I choose my streaming audio file player master and drop down, I can now choose which marker I want to jump to. So I've chosen ride symbol and we'll hit save and hit okay. So now when I go to my intro, starts at the beginning and I can play my tune. And I know when I get to my chorus, I can switch right away to this ride symbol and I've got my organ. Which is a beautiful thing. But what if I knew not too long after, I want to make sure that my organ sound switches to having no rotor or rotor or both or whatever it is that I actually would like to do. You can now do this within the streaming audio file player without needing a widget. So check this out. In the streaming audio file player, I have a marker here that says ride symbol. Here it is. I'm gonna place a marker just after this and I'm gonna call it parameter adjustment. And I'm gonna use an action here to begin to change a particular parameter. Now I know that I'm gonna to want to adjust the rotor speed on my organ sound. So for now I'm gonna leave this empty. I'm gonna come over here to my panels 
and I'm going to come over here to the wiring view. And you'll see I've got a B3 V2 loaded in. This is from Arturia, and I need to give this a name. So same way I did with the streaming audio file player, if I come down here and choose set handle, I'm just going to call this organ and hit OK. Now, when I open this up, I've got a whole list of parameters in here that I can assign. And usually I would do this to a widget. But when I click on a parameter, what I want to draw your attention to is up here on the top left, there's a number that surfaces, right? So when I click this rotor speed, it says 354. We're going to need that in a second. And this is actually for any parameter. So if I go ahead and move this draw bar, you'll see parameter 2 is there. Stop versus run, 356. So we'll see, I've got um, parameter 354, and that is actually what I'm going to directly link to the streaming audio file player to adjust that parameter. So we'll come back to our streaming audio file player. We'll go to our markers. Here's my parameter adjustment, and I'm going to choose an action. So if I choose set plugin parameter value, I'm going to be given some options here. I'm going to type in organ because that is the name that I just gave that plugin. And when I come to parameter, you will see all of the parameters are listed, which is pretty awesome. But there are a lot of parameters. So knowing that parameter number is really helpful. If I come down here and find 354, I have the ability to set any value I would like. So I'm going to set this to 1 to make sure that right after I switch to that uh, ride symbol, my rotor speaker goes from slow to fast. And let's go ahead and test it. So right now, you'll hear I've just got a slow rotor happening. And now we'll test and see if when I go to the chorus, it actually changes. So. Uh, here we go. Got piano. I would move to my verse. And here we go to the chorus. And it has adjusted that parameter, which is really nice. So I don't even have to worry about changing the rotary speed or any parameter for that matter, I can directly adjust it either from the streaming audio file player markers or I can use the same process within um, a song part action. So really handy here, powerful, opens up a lot of possibilities for you. Now I wanna show you some other improvements to this version of Gig Performer 5. So I have a super simple song here. This is Cecilia and the Satellite. So this is a super simple rack space. I've got two primary widgets. I've got a kick drum on off. This just gives me a four on the floor. And then I've got an arpeggiator on and off. With a filter cut off. Now if I want to create a new widget that is linked to one of these particular plugins, I can now do so really easily. So we're going to use this filter cutoff as an example. Right now, this filter cutoff is linked to the filter to cutoff of the pulse pad, which if I flip over here, is inside of pigments, this filter to. All I need to do is come over here and copy and paste it. And this new widget is actually going to keep its association. So it's going to know that it goes to a different parameter, but I no longer need to remap this widget, which is a really nice workflow improvement, especially if you are making a lot of adjustments to your front panel when you're working. One final thing I want to showcase from this update is a cool little update to the MIDI monitor. <laughs> If you're seeing those on the screen right now that you'll see I've got some colors and if you don't like those colors I have good news for you because you can actually set them yourself. If you go into the options you can go to display and down here at the bottom under miscellaneous you can choose MIDI monitor colors. When I click that it's going to give me the ability to set colors for all different things. Note on, note off, poly touch, control change, program change, channel pressure. So this way you can have a really clear idea of what you're seeing just by color. This is a nice handy little feature.
In addition to this, we also have a brand new OSC command that allows you to shut down Gig Performer with or without saving by using an OSC message. If you want to learn more about Gig Performer, then you can check out the videos that are on the screen right now, and we'll see you again soon.